Ever since the dramatic twist of SpaceX's Starship on April 20th, 2023, the entire space community has been holding its breath. But as the dust settles, SpaceX is already gearing up, setting the stage for a comeback like no other. Zooming into the heart of Starbase, there's a palpable energy. The orbital launch mount, once silent, is now humming with activity, signaling cryptic pad checkouts. And here's the kicker. Booster 9 is prepping for a rollout that promises to be nothing short of legendary. But wait, there's more fuel to this fire. Whispers from the Star Factory are loud and clear. An expansion is on the horizon and it's going to be monumental. But amidst this whirlwind of activity, one update stands out. The Deluge system, SpaceX's latest safety marvel, has just aced its debut test. Designed to shield the Mount Mechazilla during the Starship Super Heavy's grand debut, it's a testament to SpaceX's unwavering commitment to safety and innovation. So with the echoes of the water deluge test still fresh, what's next in SpaceX's playbook? Dive into this video as we peel back the layers. SpaceX's groundbreaking deluge system has made waves with its remarkable performance during its inaugural full test. The test's resounding success showcased the critical role played by the deluge system in safeguarding the Mount Mechazilla launch site during the ignition and liftoff of the Starship Super Heavy rocket. This innovative system proved its effectiveness in protecting the launch pad from the extreme temperature environment generated by the rocket's 33 Raptor engines, which unleash a staggering 17 million pounds of thrust accompanied by intense heat and noise. During the recent water deluge test, Thousands of gallons of water were swiftly delivered to the launch pad in just a minute, demonstrating the system's remarkable efficiency. It's worth noting that this impressive amount, although substantial, is about half the volume used by NASA's SLS Deluge system, which typically releases approximately 450,000 gallons of water to manage a rocket's extreme energy during ignition and liftoff. However, SpaceX's deluge system shows immense potential for further development and enhancement in the future. Elon Musk might just have the most epic shower system in the galaxy. The deluge system's unique operation sets it apart from traditional sound suppression systems used at the Cape. While other systems focus on countering the force of the rocket's thrust, Starship's design doesn't require one. Instead, the deluge system strategically places water to absorb thermal energy from the rocket's engine plume, the water pressure doesn't counteract the force, but rather serves the crucial purpose of carrying away the intense heat energy generated during ignition and liftoff. Enthusiastic SpaceX followers eagerly anticipate further details from the company, hoping that it will eventually share statistics on liters per second and water pressure for this innovative deluge system. Its groundbreaking design has captured attention and has even playfully earned comparisons to Elon Musk's legendary shower system. As the deluge system continues to prove its effectiveness, SpaceX remains committed to pushing the boundaries of space exploration. But that's not all. Exciting updates from the build site highlight the rapid progress and dedication to revolutionizing space exploration. Megabay 2, the future rocket factory capable of mass-producing starships, has witnessed remarkable progress in recent weeks. The transportation and successful positioning of sections of Level 4 emphasize SpaceX's precision-driven approach to assembly and logistics, ensuring the efficient movement of components. A strategic adjustment at the build site sees the scrapyard relocated to the left of Megabay 2, optimizing the utilization of available space and streamlining operations. SpaceX's meticulous planning and execution of such site arrangements demonstrate their commitment to maintaining an organized and efficient working environment. Meanwhile, Mega Bay 1 undergoes notable transformations both inside and around the bay. The emergence of a parking lot behind Mega Bay 1 confirms earlier speculations. Interestingly, a section of land remains covered in fake grass, raising curiosity about potential future plans for that area. Inside Mega Bay 1, Booster 12 takes center stage with its halves on display, showcasing the ongoing progress in its assembly. The installation of grid fins on the methane tank of Booster 12 signifies a significant milestone in the completion of this booster. Adjacent to it, Booster 9 undergoes meticulous work, a testament to the dedicated efforts of the SpaceX team. Additionally, new long steel tanks have been installed, replacing smaller ones, further enhancing the booster's design and functionality. Mega Bay 2, an architectural marvel adjacent to its predecessor, Mega Bay 1, is on the brink of a significant breakthrough. With just a single section left to finalize its towering fourth level, the pace of its construction is nothing short of breathtaking. 
As roof paneling begins to drape over its vast expanse, it's not just a construction milestone we're witnessing, but a testament to the future vision of mass-producing starships. But it's not just the rapid construction that's catching eyes. Nestled closer to the left flank of the high bay, an intriguing setup has emerged. An undeveloped ship thrust sleeve crowned with a stringered single ring. At first glance, one might assume it's a part of the S-24 II. However, the absence of a ground-level robotic welding machine tells a different story. This unique configuration, it seems, is not for the S-24 II. Instead, it's a clever workaround, using the thrust sleeve as a makeshift tilt for the single ring, a pivotal piece for the anticipated payload bay test article. Venturing deeper into the heart of the build site, the mid-bay stands tall, guarding the S-22 nose cone and E-dome assembly. Yet time seems to have paused here, with no significant alterations in sight. But a stone's throw away, the ring yard reveals glimpses of the S-24-2 and the majestic Ship 30's midlock section. A recent attempt to unite S-24-2 with the single ring stack inside the high bay hit a snag. But hope is in the air. With anticipation building for a triumphant stacking, a step vital for the rocket's exhaustive evaluations. Pivoting to the Star Factory's ambitious Phase 2 expansion, the progress is palpable. As roof paneling starts to find its place, it's evident that the blueprints are coming to life. The press pit, designed to house a colossal industrial press machine, awaits its centerpiece. Ingeniously, the strategy is to roll this behemoth into position once the factory roof stands tall, sidestepping the complexities of crane-assisted placements. The expansion's footprint is also evolving. Freshly poured concrete floors stretch out, and new footings anchor themselves, readying for what's to come. A keen observer might notice the missing firebreak wall, hinting at the boundaries of SpaceX's current dominion. This subtle cue offers a tantalizing peek into the grand design awaiting Starbase. Diving straight into the heart of SpaceX's launch site, the past week has been nothing short of a whirlwind of activity. The steel plate installation has been advancing at a brisk pace, signaling the company's relentless drive towards innovation and progress. The orbital launch mount, a centerpiece of SpaceX's ambitions, buzzed with life. It's evident that preparations are in full swing, especially with what seemed like pad checkouts, all gearing up for the grand rollout of Booster 9. While the suborbital pad A remains relatively unchanged, a stark contrast is the presence of the LR-11000 crane. It stands guard, firmly attached to Ship 25 on pad B. This isn't just a random placement, it's a strategic move to ensure the utmost safety for the diligent workers navigating the ship's tanks, especially during those crucial moments when it's depressurized. But what's SpaceX without its fair share of surprises? Elon Musk, in his signature style, dropped a bombshell on Twitter, giving the world a rare glimpse into the engine bay of Ship 25. The revelation was startling. The engine shielding for all Raptors, both sea level and vacuum, had been completely stripped away. And if that wasn't enough to stir the pot, Musk tantalizingly hinted at a potential upgrade, envisioning a future where ships might boast six Raptor vacuum engines. Venturing deeper into the launch site, the narrative shifts to an area brimming with potential, the future home of horizontal cryogenic storage tanks. As of now, a solitary pedestal is taking shape, proudly standing near Highway 4. But if you're thinking this is it, think again. Subtle signs suggest the eventual rise of 10 pedestals in the twin trenches, painting a picture of a future where at least 10 horizontal tanks might dominate the landscape. But the intrigue doesn't stop there. A closer look at the trench reveals that the pilings are once again laid bare, hinting at the imminent arrival of a second piling cap and more pedestals. And as we drift towards the rear of the launch site, a cluster of water supply tanks comes into view. These aren't just any tanks. They're the lifeline for the water-cooled steel plates. Adding to the mystery is a newly installed vertical tank, its role still shrouded in secrecy, waiting to be plumbed and unveiled. Lastly, a different perspective of the water supply tanks unveils yet another development. Fresh concrete pedestals emerging behind the towering high-pressure gas cylinder stacks. These cylinders, already staged and ready, are poised to ascend these pedestals. Once in place, they'll seamlessly integrate with Piper, enhancing the efficiency of the water-cooled steel plate system. Amidst the vast expanse of the SpaceX launch site, a fresh, triangular-shaped concrete pad emerges, casting its shadow to the left of an established concrete pedestal. Whispers among space enthusiasts suggest that this new formation might soon cradle the vertical storage tank, a recent addition to the Sanchez inventory. 
As one's gaze drifts further up the intricate landscape, the sight of cradles perched atop concrete pedestals captures attention, hinting at the imminent arrival of yet another colossal water supply tank. This could signify a monumental leap in the water storage capabilities of the launch arena. But that's not all. Tracing the intricate network of pipelines, one can spot a distinct line emerging from the water-cooled steel plate assembly weaving its way around the towering launch edifice. The pace of progress at this SpaceX bastion is nothing short of breathtaking. From the rapid advancements on the orbital launch mount to the mysterious entity known as Stage Zero, every corner of the site buzzes with activity. Recent days have witnessed the installation of robust steel plates, intricate water manifolds, and a maze of pipework. And if the freshly laid concrete adorned with protruding rebar near the orbital launch mount is any indication, we might soon see a majestic ring of fondag gracing its top. The past week has been a symphony of ceaseless concrete pouring, meticulously crafting a protective layer set to envelop the entire OLM, safeguarding even the partially exposed pipework. This concrete armor is speculated to be the final touch to this phase of construction, sealing the legacy of SpaceX's ambition. Diving deeper into the site's anatomy, one finds that the pipework, vital for channeling water to the trio of steel plate manifolds, stands proudly welded to perfection. While the Earth has claimed most of the pipework for the smaller and larger steel plate manifolds, the medium one remains concealed in its entirety. However, keen observers, armed with visual aids like the render from Chrome Kiwi, have managed to unveil the mysteries of the completed medium manifold pipework, marking their findings for the world to see. Beneath the vast expanse of the OLM, a marvel of engineering unfolds. The intricate steel plate assembly, boasting its hexagonal centerpiece, is now flanked by three plates adorned with manifolds and another three in their pristine form. This monumental task was achieved in a breathtakingly short span, clocking in at less than two weeks. While this marks a significant milestone in the steel plate installation, eagle-eyed observers will note the absence of holes and other intricate systems, hinting at the work that lies ahead. As the sun set on July 8th, the final Y-pipe made its ascent, finding its rightful place connecting to the manifold. Merely days later, on the night of July 12th, the skies echoed with the hiss of high-pressure gas making its escape atop the water supply tanks. This spectacle, likely a chapter in the purging narrative, underscores SpaceX's relentless pace. Their prowess was further showcased on July 17th, when the inaugural test saw water gushing from a center plate, albeit at a modest one-third of its power. The anticipation now builds for what many believe will be a full-throttle display, channeling the might through the entire plate system. Ascending the OLM, one encounters the launch ring. This isn't just any ring, it's the linchpin that secures the booster, ensuring it remains steadfast during the rigorous phases of testing and the final moments leading up to launch. It's also the nexus where the raptors quench their thirst for fuel. The present scene is a hive of activity. The stage is being set, quite literally, to put the booster hold-down clamps to the test. Fresh from their refurbishment, these clamps are back in action, with the Raptor Quick Disconnect stealing some of the limelight with their test on the night of July 15th. And if that wasn't enough, a full-speed retraction test added to the drama just a day before on July 13th. But there's more. A curious addition to the platform has caught the attention of many. A new framework, still tethered to the tail end of the ship QD arm, suggests a permanence to the platform's position. This isn't just any modification, it's a harbinger of the hot staging era, a technique poised to debut with the upcoming Starship launch. With the inclusion of these hot staging rings, the Starship's upper stage will find itself perched even higher, pushing the boundaries of its towering stature. But that's not all. SpaceX recently found itself on the edge of a dramatic moment. The world, with its collective gaze fixed on the skies, eagerly anticipated the majestic takeoff of the Falcon 9 rocket. This engineering marvel, standing tall and proud, was on a mission to deploy 15 of SpaceX's advanced Starlink satellites, aiming to further bridge the digital divide from the strategic location of California's Vandenberg Space Force Base. Yet, as destiny would have it, and as the countdown clock inched closer to 1.25 a.m. on that fateful July 19th morning, an unexpected twist in the tale emerged. During the tension-filled webcast, SpaceX spokesperson Zach Luppen provided a glimpse into the intricate dynamics of rocket launches. He eloquently remarked, The world of rocketry is a delicate ballet of science, engineering, and sheer will. 
While there are countless scenarios where things can veer off course, there exists just one trajectory to absolute success. This statement underscores SpaceX's unwavering commitment to safety and excellence. The team's vigilant eyes are trained to spot even the minutest of discrepancies, and if anything seems amiss, they don't hesitate to hit the brakes, ensuring that safety always takes precedence over spectacle. This wasn't an isolated incident in SpaceX's storied journey. Merely days before, on July 14th, another Falcon 9 behemoth, laden with 54 Starlink satellites, faced a similar suspense at the iconic Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida. However, showcasing the resilience and determination that SpaceX is renowned for, the rocket gracefully took to the skies the very next day, marking the successful completion of its 16th mission. The reasons behind the recent launch's last-minute interruption remain shrouded in mystery. The mission's dedicated team chose to maintain a strategic silence during the webcast, leaving many to speculate, while Vandenberg was draped in a thick, almost surreal fog Meteorological conditions were not to blame, having been previously deemed conducive for the launch. Amidst the swirl of uncertainties, one thing was crystal clear. Both the Falcon 9 rocket and its precious cargo of Starlink satellites were in pristine condition. SpaceX, with its indomitable spirit and relentless drive, is not one to be held back by temporary setbacks. Already charting the path forward, they're preparing for a rapid return to action. A recent communication from the company, shared via Twitter, hinted at a tentative rescheduling within a 24-hour window. Thus, as California prepares to embrace the night of Wednesday, space enthusiasts worldwide might be treated to the awe-inspiring spectacle of the Falcon 9 rocket piercing the heavens, leaving a trail of dreams and aspirations in its wake. Bridging the gap between ambition and reality, NASA's endeavors are not just confined to human footsteps on celestial bodies. Fire, a force of nature that has both fascinated and terrified humanity for millennia, is about to make its mark on the moon. As NASA gears up for its monumental Artemis program, a new chapter in space exploration is on the horizon. The program, which promises to catapult humans and payloads back to the lunar surface, is not just about setting footprints in the moon dust. It's about ensuring that every step taken is safe, and fire safety is at the forefront of this mission. Enter David Urban, the fire sleuth, at NASA's Glenn Research Center in Ohio. As the chief of the Low Gravity Exploration Technology Branch, Urban isn't just any investigator, he's the man leading the charge on fire experiments in space. With his eyes set on the moon, Urban has voiced his keen interest in conducting fire safety experiments on a NASA-backed commercial lunar payload services robotic moon vehicle. Why the moon, you ask? While the International Space Station has been a valuable lab for fire studies, such as the spacecraft Fire Experiment 6 aboard the Northrop Grumman Cygnus Freighter, these experiments have their time constraints. Speaking of the Cygnus Freighter, it's gearing up for a significant mission. The Sapphire 6 experiment is slated to launch on the Antares rocket, with the countdown set for no earlier than 8.30 p.m. on August 1st. As the Cygnus spacecraft takes to the skies from NASA's Wallops Flight Facility in Virginia, it will be carrying not just the Sapphire 6, but a plethora of scientific equipment and supplies for the ISS. But the Cygnus's journey doesn't end at the space station. After a 90-day sojourn, the spacecraft with the fiery experiment in tow will embark on its final voyage, culminating in a planned disintegration in Earth's atmosphere. But why this obsession with fire on the Moon? Urban elucidates that the lunar surface offers a unique environment to observe flame growth in materials used within crew cabins. Moreover, it provides an unparalleled testing ground for pioneering fire extinguishing techniques. These lunar experiments aren't just about the thrill of science, they're about fortifying the safety protocols for future space missions and enriching the knowledge base of NASA's Artemis program. And as for Artemis, the program is nothing short of a space odyssey. With Artemis 3, NASA envisions astronauts once again leaving their footprints on the Moon, with the launch window eyed for 2025 or 2026. The success of this mission hinges on the progress of SpaceX's Starship spacecraft, the chosen chariot for this lunar journey. But Artemis isn't just about manned missions. From Artemis II's lunar flyby to a cavalcade of scientific instruments, landers and rovers dispatched via the CLPS program, NASA is painting a holistic picture of lunar exploration for the next generation.